after we've added the disks, in other words, whenever I go in and say to the disk group, add the disk, Oracle, in the background, starts to reload balance and restripe so that the data now, if you look, some of it's on the first three original disks, and now some of it has transparently and automagically, without you doing anything, moved over to the other disks. Now, for those of you who have used logical volume managers, if you were just looking at this scenario as, I just want to add more space, for the logical volume manager, you could have added a new disk, but the only time objects would use that space is if they did inserts or updates that caused the blocks to migrate after that new disk was uh, added. Whereas here in ASM, it rebalances things automatically for you. So the moment you add more space, it automatically rebalances the items across that space. There are parameters you can set to control that. Now, once I've got it set up like this, I want to start dropping some disks. In other words, I want to try and get, if I drop disk one, those three little red boxes I want to see move over to another disk. So as I drop the disks, next slide please, they will move over to the remaining disks and now I could actually drop or take offline those disks in that disk group and use them for some other purpose. You really can't do anything like this with logical volume management. Next slide please. And there we go. And I think that passes on to Jeremy. Sure. No, I'm sorry. Is that right. not still me? Still me. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you want to do is you want to segregate your jobs into various workloads depending on their individual or common characteristics. And what we specifically mean is their performance requirements. Uh, parallelization, you also want to segregate jobs into smaller units and execute, execute them in parallel. Now be careful there. Um, a lot of times I'll go to a site and someone will say, well, we've got a 32-way uh, processor box on, on each of the nodes. And so we've set the parallel at however n number of nodes, uh, stay where we were at, the number of nodes times the number of processors. And then they say, OK, let's do that for every table. And then they parallelize that for every query. And what happens is in that case, they've overdone it. Because if you ask them, well, how many concurrent users do you have? And they say, oh, we've got you know 500 concurrent users. You've just created a bunch of work to separate stuff across nodes, uh, probably artificially, that will cause things to run slower. So you definitely want to manage your parallelization so that you don't overdo it. Let's go to the next slide. So one way that you might do the distribution is you might define it such that order management, shipping, education, contracts, maybe these are ones that have similar characteristics primarily operate off node one, and then payroll, HR, benefits and time cards primarily off node two, and so on and so on. Now, uh, you have to set up to do this. In other words, this is not something that happens automatically. In other words, automatically, if you just set it up and ran all these things in there, there'd be a little bit of each of them on every node. And that may not be what, what you want. You may want to segregate some of the performance characteristics to particular nodes. Next slide, please. That and, is that's, the and that's a perfect introduction to the next slide. Really, they run together because services are the, uh, the key enabler of doing workload management with Oracle. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of information that you can find um, on the internet, some different places about services. Uh, the bottom ball bullet point on this slide is, um, I'm not sure, I think that's correct. I don't believe that's any longer a limitation with 11.1 and 11.2. And it, the limitation was not, it was just due sort of to the way that Oracle was, was doing service, the, the way the clusterware was um, doing services. It was sticking them all in a, in a single value init parameter instead of using an 11, I believe it starts to use a multi-value init parameter, which removes the limitation entirely. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to fly through these because um, we're very short on time. So next slide, please. Uh, as we said before, services are, are the key thing for enabling load balancing. Uh, load balancing and runtime connection load balancing. We're going to, I believe, come back to those a bit later. So stick those in your, file those away in your memory. Go, to, go ahead to the next slide. Um, there are a couple different ways to manage them. You'll see them all here. One key point about services, it does a lot. Um, it's 
it's there are a lot of benefits even if you're not segregating your workload even if you're running everything across the cluster it is very very useful to use services there are many other benefits um, one of the biggest ones is that it's, uh, the AWR here um, collects statistics on a per service basis so it makes it easy to sort of see at a high level um, well okay my reporting application is really doing a lot of heavy queries but this other application is kind of is not doing much at all next slide so I would certainly recommend understanding services are often they work together with uh, with modules and actions um, and there's sort of a hierarchy service module action that that you should define and use. Um, that's something that has to be done by developers and programmers, but it's something that I, I is a, a very, a very, it's very advisable best practice to follow. Um, there's a couple goals when you define services um, that you might you might consider reading up on these and understanding how they work. Uh, the the DTP is for uh, global transactions, um, which means where you have uh, multiple databases, um, which may or may even not be Oracle databases. It's even possible to have different kinds of databases where you have a single transaction. Um, and for doing that sort of thing, you need a special service. Next slide. Um, some of the goals, some of the a TAF stands for Transparent Application Failover. Um, that is tightly integrated with services as well. You need to use services in order to have transparent application failover. Um, it, note that it's it's really not quite as transparent as they claim it is. It's not completely transparent, um, but it is a great feature that I I have seen many applications that, that benefited from that. Um, it's it's a really it's essentially when the connection to the data, if one of your nodes goes down, the application never has to know about it, and the application automatically reconnects to another instance, and, and even in the middle of a query. Next slide, please. These are just a handful of views. Next slide, please. You can look at those later. The, uh, the resource manager, quickly look and make sure. Yes, uh, make sure I keep going here. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the resource manager is a whole other feature. Now, now I'm jumping on, moving on from services to the resource. This is not a rack specific feature. Um, however, there are a few things uh, in it that are specific to rack. Um, but this is a general feature of the database that allows you to, uh, to sort of monitor the way resources are used and limit and control it. So you can, as you see here, it just it can. Uh, one of the I'm working with one customer who's investigating this now to control ad hoc queries that might be a little out of control. Next slide, please. Um, the consumer groups are the key way that you use resource managers. You create groups of users and then you assign attributes to those users, um, like how much CPU are they allowed to use. Next slide. Um, fast application notification events. This is a feature of Clusterware um, that uh, allows events to be sent out. Um, your, there are many different kinds of consumers. The listener is actually a consumer of, of, of cluster events. Um, also connection pools and the application server can use this. And also your, you can write your own applications to receive events. For example, if you want your application to be notified when a node goes down or when a node comes up. This would be very relevant, for example, if you're using transparent application failover, which is a feature of services. Next slide, please. Um, oh, and here's a list of sample events. Next slide, please. Um, it enables, let's see, here's a couple of the different things that it enables. The types of, oh, okay, the events are broken into these three categories, just so you know, services, node events, and load balancing events. Uh, node events would be like up, down. Service events are related to services, like it says. Load balancing events have to do with the amount of load on each node. So it enables you to intelligently route um, new connections or existing workloads. So you can, if you have a, a cluster of 10 machines, you can make sure that you always send work to the machine that's not loaded and you evenly utilize all 10 of these servers. Next slide, please. See, like I said, your own applications can use them. Um, these are a couple other applications that use them. Next slide, please. The uh, server-side callouts. Now, uh, Server-side callouts uh, are are part of the Clusterware um, framework, which I kind of referenced a while ago when I first talked about the Clusterware. Uh, Server-side callouts are, 
basically lets you have a program which is triggered by an event that happens. So you can say, if a node goes down, then I want you to run this program, not on the node that's down, of course, on a different node. Um, and you could, for example, send an email out to somebody as a notification, or some people will use use these server-side callouts to to um, to fail over applications, to to do connection management, to to reconnect if a node goes down, things like that. Next slide, please. And I should have looked at the next slide because here's a few examples of things that you can use them for. Next slide, please. And again, if you're a visual person. Um, Here's a uh, sort of a picture of what's happening, and you can see the fan events. Uh, and this is an example of a connection pool in an application server, and it using the events to go back and forth. Next slide, please. Um, if you're familiar with um, design patterns, it's the publish subscribe design pattern that's used. Um, next slide, please. And the uh, I think we're just wrapping up the bit on the load balancing advisory now. Um, it's uh, the load balancing yeah. advisory. This is just, I think, a lot of repeated information that it's sending load information. It's using the events notification to send how much load goes, how much load is currently on each node. Next slide, please. And uh, a couple of views that you can look at. Next slide, please. I think it's uh, your turn. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did. I jumped into. S I That's okay. There are big I apologize. I <laughs> no problem. Can we, move, can we go back to the previous slide, please? I knew that you were on next side, and I wanted to get to you, <laughs> so you had a chance to share with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Thank you so much. A little too uh, ambitious. Yeah. Hi, everybody, and uh, I really apologize for uh, being so late. Uh, let's uh, talk about the load balancing advisory here. Uh, load balancing advisory is a new feature, basically introduced in 10G release 2. Uh, it distributes the workload across all the instances of your RAC databases um, and uh, it provides the advice about how to distribute the incoming work to the available instances across the cluster. Uh, by default, the feature is turned off. Uh, the setting of this feature is set to none. So you have to explicitly turn it on in order to use the load balancing advisory. Basically, advises uh, based on balancing the connection, balancing the workload across the instances of your RAC databases. For an example, for any reason, imagine there is a node or instance uh, running on that node is uh, get slow due to the heavy workload on the server, uh, on the node, or maybe the node is hung for any reason. So it is so intelligent that it stops sending the workload to the node which is hung or maybe slow. And also, it is analyzes the workload on the various instances and uh, send across the connections very uh, intelligently. Uh, next slide, please. Um, actually, the load balancing also uh, tightly integrated with the AWR and uh, $V service and $V service metric history, which will be updated every hour. 